Welcome to Determined to Succeed. I'm your host, Don Malarney, also known as the Unique Connector. I'm so excited to have Andy on the show today. So Andy, I want to kick it off that you had the career of being on Broadway to now being a realtor. So let's kind of talk about that journey of those are pretty <laughs> drastic industries, but yeah. I know there's some, you know, similarities in different ways. So Andy, let's talk about even how you got into Broadway. It's a great question. Um, happy to be here. But so yeah, it, it was not even that was not a um, streamlined path. I Actually, originally, I was big into sports growing up, and I was originally going to go to college to swim. Mm -hmm. um, but I took a theater arts class my senior year of high school because I heard it was an easy English credit to get an A <laughs> in, and I was a lazy senior in high school. So I took the class, and I loved it, and my teacher was incredibly encouraging. Uh, I auditioned for the play that year and got cast as one of the leads and sort of caught the bug, so to speak. And... When I was getting ready to go to school, she was like, so what are you going to major in? And I was like, I'm not sure. I might want to go into education. And she's like, I think you should take some theater courses. You're, you'd be really, you're really naturally skilled. And I think it'd be great for you. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. So that little like boost of encouragement went a long way. Cause I went to my freshman orientation. I met with the swim coach and I met with the head of the theater department and learned ultimately I couldn't do both. They required too much time. And, um, had to kind of make a big my revolving door you know moment of you know who knows what my life would have been if i chose to go swim but i was more curious about what four years of theater would do than four years of swimming and i will streamline through this but i got one did theater didn't ever swim uh and got cast in a musical and realized i had some singing background but i was like this is what i love and realized I was going to the wrong school for that and transferred to Madison, worked with a voice teacher who used to work at a school in New York, auditioned, got into the school in New York, which started an 11 year uh, stint living mainly in New York. I ended up doing um, three national tours of Broadway shows. I was a singer for the Radio City Christmas Spectacular with the Rockettes. And I did a bunch of other really fun stuff. I got to my my icebreaker that I always told people is by the time I was 30, I'd been to all 50 states and performed in 45 of them. Oh, so wow. that's my not always the coolest cities, I mind you, but I definitely have been not just driven through. I've been to all 50 states and the coolest place I got to perform was Tokyo. I got to perform there for a month with one of my shows. So um that is how I got into theater, how I got out of theater. Um there was um a lot of factors, but I was I, at this point was 31. Um, you know, it's it's a tough life out there. Like it, it, it was fun. I would say you only work when you're unemployed um, because when I was doing shows and things, I was having the time of my life and being around people that were fun and exciting. And and then in between, I'm, I'm either filing for unemployment or working multiple jobs that are flexible enough to let me audition and leave. And, you know, a 30 year old would two male roommates in one bathroom was just not like the most fun by the end of my time there. And I kind of got to my second revolving door moment, which was, do I double down and reinvest in this life and get into more TV film, which I was realizing was really financially how I was going to be able to make this career path work. Or I'm from Madison. My brother had two little kids. I was drawn back to Madison, um, but I had no idea what I was going to do. And yet again, I was like, I don't see a lot of like, I think I've had my time in New York and my passion for it was waning. And like, you have to be all in on that career. You have to be, because if you're not, you're going to be miserable. And I was starting to be a little miserable. And I was like, you know what? I'm more curious now what my future in Madison will bring. So I moved back here and, and I guess I'll just keep going as to how I got to where I am right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don knows I like to talk. So oh, I, but it. I it's, 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 this is the, the, the shortest version of the story I can tell. Um, so I moved back here. Uh, I worked uh, for in commercial real estate uh, with a company called Cressa. Uh, my dad had a lot of connections in commercial real estate, and uh, it made sense for me to start there. I didn't know what I was getting into. I knew nothing about commercial real estate, but they bought into um, all of these networking groups or, or chambers and things. And the guys were all pretty well established and didn't really go to a lot of them. So I realized very quickly, both personally and professionally, I wanted to re-ingratiate myself into the community and what better way to do that than 
go to all these events. And yeah. so I just started using my time because I wasn't busy with work because I hadn't met anyone yet. No one was going to you know, work with me. So I started creating what I believe to be like good relationships personally. And um, am now an ambassador for DMI, an ambassador for the Middleton Chamber. Like I've found sort of my niches within these groups. I'm still members uh, now with a lot of other ones because I find a lot of value. But um, that was sort of the beginning of how I started networking. And, you know, the pandemic kind of ended my, it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't mm, progressing in commercial real estate the way I think I, I wanted to, or it wasn't, it wasn't like feeling like the right fit. So when the pandemic hit, I kind of pivoted and, you know, tried different things. And, you know, I felt like I was a bit of a free agent professionally and was talking to as many people as I could that I'd met to be like, should I go into banking? Should I go into insurance? Should I go into whatever? Like there's, and I tried a couple other things and ultimately real estate residential was what was like an interest of mine. It was when I started in New York, the, the houses that would sell for like $18 million were like, three bedroom, two bathroom townhouses that were, you know, 2000 square feet. And it mm -hmm. kind of blew my mind. And now I am here and I'm able to, I feel like I've found a career that really highlights my strengths and my natural abilities. And I've met enough people that I um, feel like I'm armed with a lot of resources outside of real estate that help my business. And um, I love the collaboration. I love seeing all these houses both good and bad you learn a lot um but yeah it's, I, that's that's a the long short version of sort of how I got from living in New York pursuing a career in acting to living in Madison as a residential realtor <laughs> Ugh, well and I love that and that's where I think it's just such an interesting like journey you've had and this is where I even giggle too of how you and I met was in sales class together and we'd see each other every week and we never met each other until like a year later in person. And like, we've only seen each year. other. I mean, I feel like it was like two years later. Two years, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I just feel like that's the interesting part of how you can build relationships, no matter where you are, but also too, just the things that you can learn from each other. And yeah. um, I remember when you told me you were at Broadway and I was like, what? And you're in insurance or, you know, that was when you were in insurance time. And I was yeah. so like, thrown back of like, wow, look at this. And so, you know, even as we were talking about your career earlier, you know, Broadway, I think, you know, a lot of people think, Ooh, shiny, like, Ooh, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to be a movie star, or all these things. And so yeah. what's maybe some things that you learned that weren't really as glamorous or things that you wish you would have known before even mm -hmm. going into that career? Well, I think first off, um, you know, I was pursuing musical theater, right? And in comparison to a lot of my peers who had been doing it since they were little kids, you know, I had done like a handful of shows. I didn't know very much, but I think the biggest lesson when you get there is everyone is really talented, like everyone. Like there's, it's really, really challenging to find ways to differentiate yourself from the pack. And you are you really have to grow thick skin quickly because you're going to be told no more than yes i mean it's like you know they always say even going to into sales you do 100 cold calls for one to two yeses you get 98 99 no's that's yeah. life however i'm not selling a product i'm not selling a business i'm selling myself and if you you're no you're and sometimes your no is about your physical appearance and you have to like really work on self-love and self-care and unfortunately a lot of actors don't and get affected greatly by that and and for me it, I think it actually benefited me and um hardened me for lack of a better word like I was very midwest nice when I lived in New York like everyone's like why are you so nice I don't get it and it's like I don't know it's just it's just my nature because every it's a very ruthless industry and okay. yeah I mean that's one big thing and I know a lot of people know that but it's um I think the other piece with what I did, even when I was finding success, it's really hard to maintain relationships, both with your friends and with significant others. I mean, so I did three national tours, which was really exciting. I had to travel all over, but I'm gone for nine, 10, 12 months. Yeah. Where 
you don't really get many days off and you get, or if you get a day off, it's one day, you're not flying home or, you know, you're missing birthdays. I've missed weddings. I missed, um, you know, births of children of my family. You know, it's like I, things that matter to me, I couldn't leave my job. And um, so, I mean, that, those are a few things that, you know, the other piece was like, I have a very, de- like I said, I grew up playing sports. I like sports a lot stereotypically and most of the people I met in New York were not could care less about sports so I was very engrossed in theater but didn't really have an outlet for a lot of the other passions I had in my life and when you're actively working you only get one day off a week and it's usually a Monday no one's doing anything I wasn't meeting finance people or business people that lived in New York that I could connect with on a non-theatrical level and I missed that. Whereas like now here in Madison, it's like all sports and whatever. And I, I have to like actively search out the theater stuff. But um, I think I think balance is 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 a challenge in that industry. Finding that um, and understanding with 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 relationships and, and friendships, because it's just really, really tough. It's really tough, especially when you're working in what you're pursuing. Um, you don't see friends, you miss important things. And it's you have to be okay with that. And that's really tough. Yeah. Um, and well, I don't to think travel I that long. Like yeah. that's you know, living, living out of two suitcases for yeah. a year. And then when you come to New York, you're subletting an apartment. So it's not yours. You, you basically have a room. And if you know anything about New York, it's a small room. I guarantee it. <laughs> and mm-hmm. you're sharing a bathroom. Like I said, like, it's not, it's not as glamorous as it looks. I mean, People certainly idolize like film and TV stars a little bit more than Broadway stars, but I know a lot of people that are like, oh, that's my dream. And I'm like, okay, well, being on Broadway, the first couple months, it's high, you know, I can't believe I'm here. And then it turns into the same job you did at your regional theater back at home because like it's a job in the end. And sometimes it feels like work. And it's, you know, and that's one of the reasons I sort of waned away from it is like the allure, the, 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 the fantasy of theater that kind of like brought me in was going away. I started looking at other shows that I was seeing of, with a more critical eye. And I was like, I don't like this as much. I don't like, I want to be mesmerized. I want to be taken on a journey, but I don't want to be thinking about the lighting design. I don't want to be thinking about the costumes and like, Oh, there's a, you know, a set piece didn't work or, you know, that's not fun anymore. It became too technical. And I wanted to, to kind of pull back. And I also just, lost a lot of the drive for it and that was a big reason why I left because you have to love that like I said you give up a lot to do that career so if you don't love it you should go and do anything else because it is there's no tenure there's no retirement plan you know no one taught me how to save that was one thing I wish my program had done a better job of like it's financially it ebbs and flows so greatly that like you should be doing everything you can to save for your future. And no one was telling me that. And I started way later than I wanted to, but um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a few things, but there, there's certainly more. <laughs> yeah. I have lots to share as far as like the, the pros and cons of that world. But I will, I will finish by saying when I talk to young people about this, the first question I always ask them is, is there anything else you want to do? And if the answer is no, then you have to try. You have to go and you have to learn yourself. Like you'll either be successful and maybe some people really take to that life and and don't mind not having sort of like a grounding home base and, and, or you're going to be deterred like I was over time and leave on your own. But like, you can always say you went and you pursued a passion, a goal, something you're, I'm finding now is like one of my biggest strengths or differentiators in my my life here is that like not many people have my background Mm -mm. and I remember coming home to visit when I was on tour and I'd have like you know a week off over the holidays I'd come home and see high school friends that I know have jobs that pay them better they have families they're starting to to move towards that next phase of life and I sort of envied that a little bit and then I would say that to them and be like are you kidding me I envy you. I envy what you're doing. Like, really? I'm living out of two suitcases and like, you know, making not a, an enormous amount of money and, you know, have, have no relationship to speak of or whatever. But it's like the grass is always greener. And then now that I'm here and happily married and like, you know, moving into a professional career, I get to say I, I pursued something I was passionate about for 11 years. You know, it wasn't an insignificant amount of time, but most people never give themselves that opportunity 
and I guess I'm proud that I was able to, and, and very grateful to my parents for supporting me just like, even just emotionally, because most parents are like, that's dumb. Don't do it. That would be a totally normal reaction. My dad was an attorney, you know, it doesn't make sense that he was like, I believe in you. I was like, whoa. Um, but that without, there's a lot of sort of like, if this didn't happen, I would have never taken that next step. A lot of everything happens for a reason type of things happen yeah. to me. And if I hadn't have had those, I would never have had the courage to go there. Because moving well, to New York. Like, who would have thought in taking that class in high school that you would go to Broadway? I mean, like you kind of had a little bit of interest, but it's like, oh my gosh. And you leaned into it. And I think yeah. that's where just hopefully the listeners are learning from that, that you leaned into something that you're passionate about. You did it. You tried it. You did it for 11 years. And sometimes some things kind of fizzle, but it's yeah. okay. Yeah. And like, look at all the things that you gained from that experience. And if you wouldn't have never have done it, you would have regretted it. And so this yeah. is where I always love because it it's just, it's an interesting background. You've given a different perspective to of yourself. And just, mm -hmm. I think that's where it goes back to just your deep down values that you care about people. And it's about relationships and, and you see the things that maybe not other people see that, oh, it's really not that shiny over here or, you know, like the different hardships, I guess, in life. And so now that you've switched gears, now mm -hmm. you're about, now you're doing real, it's real estate. And it's about relationships. And so, you know, deep down, you, you've said that a couple of times in the conversation, just how important relationships are to you. Where do you think that like determination to keep building relationships? Why is that so important to you? Um, that's a good question. I, if I'm, if I'm, this might not be the right answer. I'm just answering because I, I don't know. I've always been a people person. I'm drawn to people. I, yeah love i feel like you can always learn something from someone i mean you and i've talked about this before it's like I, i've also learned you know that well I, i'm very empathetic and i think some of that is because i've met so many different people from so many different backgrounds mm -hmm. like living in new york opened my eyes to different communities different backgrounds beliefs you know uh it was unbelievably helpful i think i was generally like empathetic but i was like oh you know because i think a lot of anger hate confusion in our world comes from people just not understanding other people and not taking the time to get to know people that are different than them and 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 i've learned so much by talking to and you know some people are bad people and i don't care it, or or bad people's wrong but like what your religion is or what your race is or whatever and like you can be a good or bad person within any of those those forms you know and we mm -hmm. tend to blanket those statements so i'd rather get to know people and i learn a lot more and i can empathize with them and then hopefully advocate for people that don't otherwise have a voice but i i've told you this like when we met in sales class and i am just not a good traditional salesperson. like i'm not i'm really bad at it because i want a genuine connection with my person that i'm talking to like if you and i had a one-on-one -on -one, I don't want to have to ask for your business day one. I want you to want to work with me because you trust me, because you respect me, because, and so the, the beauty and why I feel like I've kind of settled into a great career for me is it's a long trajectory, but I'm not pitching anyone on helping you buy a house tomorrow. Like you need to, most people don't today have a need for what I do, but if I make a genuine connection with you and a year, two years down the line, you or someone, you know, has a need, I hope I'm top of mind because I hope I've created a, a quality relationship. And I've said this to you before too. It's like, I'm not the right agent for everyone either. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there, and I'm okay with that. I, I think, I think, especially in this industry, trust communication, they're, they're so unbelievably important because especially now I'm probably helping you with the largest financial transaction of your life to date. And that's, I don't take it lightly and I don't think you should either. And so if I'm, even if I come highly recommended and we don't jive on our first meeting, I would, I would say maybe I'm not the right fit. And I've said that before and um, that's okay because I've also, I sort of like quality comes first, quantity comes from the quality that you provide. I believe that genuinely, you know, real estate's tough to start in. I won't lie, but I, I'm really proud of myself for the connections I had made over the first couple of years living in Madison, because I think a lot of people trusted me, even though they knew I was new, 
But um, I think I mentioned this, like I try to arm myself with as many other smarter, better people as I can. So when I walk into a room, it's not just me. It's like, here's someone I can help you with this. Here's someone that can help me with this. I trust this person, that person, this person, that person. I want my clients to feel bombarded with resources. You know, I, I, mm-hmm. I genuinely think like we're all stronger together as opposed to like, there's a lot of people that do it on their own and are very successful, but that sounds exhausting. I need yeah. help from other people. And that goes back to those relationships. Some of them will never be clients, but they will be referrals. they will be resources. they will be just like people speaking kindly about you goes so far. And you can't tangibly look at sales based on someone saying a nice thing about you, but like having a reputation that is commendable and admirable, I think is more than financial or, or, or professional success. I mean, that's like a life goal. And that's how I want my legacy to be. I don't want to treat people poorly. I want to get to know as many people as possible. And I'm lucky that I'm an extroverted person. So like it <laughs> comes naturally. Yeah. I, I love being around people. It gives me energy. It gives me uh, passion. I learn something new. And sometimes I get like excited about things that I, when I sit down and <laughs> calm down, I'm like, okay, I don't need to go off the rails on every conversation, you know, but, but yeah, that's, that's, I think I've, I've learned how to highlight my natural abilities and skills, which a lot of them are people and people related. So I'm really leaning into those now, especially with real estate. I love that. Well, and that's where I think you and I had an instant connection just because we are very similar with values mm-hmm. and, and, you know, being a resource for others. And it's not just about what we have to sell or what we have to offer. It's about how can we support you and what can we get you, you know, in front of the right person to help you succeed. And so that's the part where I've always just enjoyed getting to know you because I think it's just a reminder too, that we all have a unique background. We've all had a unique journey Mm -hmm. and the things that we've done have been kind of almost purposeful for us to learn and the things that we've gained to become the person that we are. And so, you know, what's even a last thought that you even have for the listeners, Andy, when it comes to maybe themselves in a weird pivotal moment or just how to keep going into or leaning into what they're really good at? That's a good question. We're, I mean, I'm, you know, in my mid thirties, I'm, you know, relatively new in a career. Um, But I think as we've discussed, like, sometimes my greatest strengths have nothing to do with the business that I'm doing. And, Mm -hmm. and I think trusting that you're a well-rounded person who has something to say and has a place here, whatever that industry is, or, or if you're not happy in your job, like be open to new opportunities. I mean, you can relate to that. I know. And I mean, I'm like (laughs) to echo off what you just said about me, I've been so much fun to watch you uh, in, in, in the very short time we've known each other sort of like progress into the, the, the place you are right now, which talk about like highlighting your strengths and abilities. Like you, you figured that out and, you know, making a pivot at, at um, you know, we're in a similar phase of life, you know, it's like, it's scary. And, you know, you have a family, there's like responsibilities, but mm-hmm. I think you have to have surround yourself with people that's that um, encourage you and support you, I'd say is like the number one thing. Um, I would never have done this if my wife didn't support me doing it. Like, there's no way I wouldn't have felt comfortable. I wouldn't have felt confident. It's so volatile to begin with. And she really pushed me and like, it, like surprisingly so. And I was like, okay, because I was contemplating some other jobs that would have paid a more consistent salary, but I wasn't very excited about. And, and I did tell myself when I moved back here, I didn't want to do something just for the money. Like yeah. I pursued something I was passionate about and I'm, I'm very proud of that, but I didn't want to come here and be like, okay, I just need to make money now. And, and surrounding yourself with, with, with people that have your back as opposed to our, you know, stepping on your back to get to the, their next level, or whatever. We all have a varied amount of people in our lives that, that provide different, but I would say like, put your closest allies as close as possible to you. People that will, that you can lean on when you're feeling insecure people that, um, cause we, I mean, even if I'm not new in an industry, you're going to feel insecure at some point, You're going to feel like you're not good enough. You're going to, at least in my experience in every industry I've been a part of, you know, there's, there's highs where you're like, I'm really good at this. I'm awesome. I can do whatever I want. And then there's going to be times like I'm a piece of garbage and I shouldn't even do this. Should I leave? And so just getting people that, that know you 
in your truest form are going to be your biggest allies and probably your biggest cheerleaders too, as far as spreading what you do to other people. And um, could be family, could be friends, but I'd say like, that's the biggest thing that helps me in keeping one foot in front of the other is just having someone with their hand on your shoulder while you're doing it. You know, um, as much as like, I, I clearly, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I am empathetic, but I also like community is so much stronger than a singular person. So I'll never be the smartest person in the room, but I hope that with my resources, I'll always be the most resourceful person, you know, or whatever it is, but I, I will never do anything alone like when it comes to my professional career. So always surround yourself with people that have your back. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that and thankful that we met in sales class because I, I you know, I appreciate you and, and I'm so proud of you and all the things that you've done and the leaps that you've taken because it's been pretty cool to watch your growth even in the last couple of years and to learn more from you. So I appreciate you and I want you to keep shining bright and to spread the happiness to other, but also to just the gumption to keep going. So I appreciate you very much. Well, Thanks and for joining me. you're one of those people that's encouraging me and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. like that, just that alone, you know, is enough to keep those feet moving in the right direction. Cause if you surround yourself with people that say, you're never going to do it. You're never going to do it. And, and yeah. well, I'm not the type of person that's like, I'm going to prove it to you. It's like, I need people that like believe in me and, yeah. you know, you and I, you know, COVID's a crazy thing, but we we've barely we've met way more in this capacity than we've ever met in person. And I, I feel know. like we're really close and we've gotten to know each other very well. And I appreciate that. Um very yeah. much. Very much so. Well, I appreciate you and thank you for joining me on the show. And I hope the listeners connect with you yeah. and learn more from you. But I thank you very much, Andy, for joining oh, me. Oh, my pleasure. Absolutely.